over the course of the presentation, we are going to take you through an introduction to cost planning structural steelwork and the importance of robust cost advice in the selection of the most appropriate frame solution. Whilst this presentation will focus on the cost planning of structural steelwork frame solutions, the initial steps will be common to any frame type. So why is this so important to the design and procurement of a, of a new building? The selection of frame configuration and material is a key design decision as it impacts on other key building elements, such as the foundations, quantum of cladding, finishes, services routes, as well as impacting on the height of the building, planning grid and position of cores, risers, etc. Significant changes at a later date can adversely impact on the other major building elements and design program, for example, having to revisit the building height, layout, interface with finishes, etc. Furthermore, selecting an inappropriate frame solution can result in the client paying a higher cost for the frame than they perhaps could have done, as well as affecting buildability, site logistics and construction program. It is therefore important to give robust cost advice throughout the process. There are a number of key stages to the cost planning of a frame which complement the development of design through the recognised design stages. During feasibility and initial design stages when the budget for the building is established, it is important to set a realistic budget for all individual elements of the building, including the frame. Initial cost modelling of a building frame will focus on the setting of elemental cost targets, which can be common to any frame solution. This then develops into an option analysis that will compare the various frame solutions typically undertaken during the development of the concept design and more detailed cost planning through the developing design stages. This iterative process is set out on the following slides. The setting of the initial elemental budget for the frame and other building elements typically occurs during the very early stages of the project to determine the feasibility of the project against the overall construction cost budget. At this early stage, there is minimal design information available, and the purpose is to set a realistic target cost that the design can develop within. During feasibility, as measurement is generally limited to overall floor areas, cost consultants typically use in-house or published cost models, benchmarks based on similar building types, and other historic cost data to inform a rate per meter squared gross internal floor area for the frame and other building elements. The key consideration is how to pitch the rate for the specific project. While standard cost ranges and previous project data are useful tools, it is vital to engage with the other members of the design team to gather as much information on the proposed project as possible and to consider those key project specific factors that vary from project to project at the earliest stages. This enables an assessment of where the proposed project fits in relation to the standard ranges. A number of factors have a key impact on the estimated frame cost including building function and sector, location, and site constraints and conditions, and they should be considered in turn. The usage of the building affects a number of key aspects of the frame design, including the design loadings, grid and span requirements, extent of repetition in the frame, and floor-to-floor -floor height. This means that the average weight of the frame will vary from building type to building type. For example, a simple low eaves industrial portal frame building could have a frame weight of 40 kilograms a meter squared gross internal floor area, while a multi-storey city centre office with a requirement for long spans and column-free space could have a weight of 90 kilograms a meter squared. It is therefore important to make sure that the cost range is based on similar projects. It is also important to gain information on the required function and facilities of the specific building, as this will also impact on the developing frame design. For example, Projects which contain a range of types of space, such as atriums, open plan offices, cellular space and boardrooms, will have different grid and loading requirements compared to a more efficient repetitive building with more regular grids. Similarly, buildings containing specialist functions with particular acoustic or vibration attenuation requirements that affect the frame design will also need to be considered. For example, in the healthcare sector, hospital operating theatres have strict vibration control requirements which can impact on the frame design and make certain frame solutions more appropriate. And such specialist requirements are unlikely to be considered as part of the standard cost ranges, so adjustments are required. The location of a project is a key factor in setting a cost level and indices are available to enable the adjustment of cost data across different geographical regions as well as indices to account for tender price inflation. 
using a City of London rate for a new project in Newcastle would have a significant bearing on the accuracy of the cost due to the different local market conditions and it is therefore key to ensure that all benchmark data is adjusted to a common location and base date. As well as the geographical location of the site, an understanding of the site-specific features is also important when setting the target cost. The site directly impacts on the design of the proposed building in areas such as achievable floor plate configuration, grid, complexity of the building form and building height, which will impact on the frame weight and regularity. Where complex structural solutions are needed to overcome specific features or restrictions such as retained facades, adjacency of other buildings or poor ground conditions, the overall frame rate is likely to increase as fabrication costs are higher and more complex details are required. The specific side will also affect the cost of construction as it impacts on logistics. Even where the designed frame solution for two buildings are similar, the logistics and access arrangements will vary significantly between city centre sites, easily accessible, more isolated sites, or industrial estates. An understanding of the site conditions of previous project data or the allowances made within the standard cost range are necessary in order to establish how the proposed project sits in comparison. These cost tables set out some generic cost ranges for three different frame types and have been established over a period of time as part of the Steel Insight articles published in building. As previously mentioned, rather than arbitrarily selecting the lowest, highest or mean of the ranges, it is important to gain information on the proposed project and to make informed adjustments to suit that project. This includes adjusting the data for the proposed location and base date. To use the tables, firstly identify which of the frame types most closely relates to the proposed project. For example, if it was an out-of-town business park office of up to five storeys, then frame type 1 would be the most relevant. Then, select and add the preferred floor type, for example, metal decking and lightweight concrete topping, and an allowance for fire protection if required, to give a total typical cost range for the structure. With fire protection, it is important to remember that not all buildings need additional protection, for example, detached single-storey buildings with no access to the roof, such as a typical industrial portal frame building. It is important to consult with the design team to understand the anticipated frame weight, variables such as the floor-to-floor -floor height and the required fire rating, as well as all of the other key cost drivers, including complexity, site conditions, location, function and logistics, to determine whether they are above or below the average and to adjust the rate adopted accordingly. So, if we were looking at a low-rise, out-of-town office with light industrial usage on the ground floor, the points to consider will include... Firstly, the likelihood that there may be a higher storey height to the ground floor. Secondly, that the upper floor spans and loadings are likely to be regular, but may be different to the grid required for the ground floor. Also, that fire protection may not be needed to the roof if there is no access. And finally, that site access is likely to be good with no site constraints. Therefore, using the cost tables, it is likely that the frame cost would be in the middle to higher end of the range given for frame type 1, due to the higher ground floor storey height and potential grid change between ground and upper floors. The flooring system is likely to be fairly standard, so in the low to middle of the standard range. Fire protection is also likely to be low to middle, due to not all members, members needing to be fire protected, and less aesthetic protection requirements to the light industrial use. Finally, the composite frame rate should be adjusted for the proposed location using indices. The quarterly updated cost model can be viewed through the steelconstruction.info site, which also contains the full archive of Steel Insight articles. As the design develops, it is good practice to review a number of alternative structural solutions for both frame and floors, typically at concept design stage. At this stage, the building form, massing and layouts will be being developed, but there will be sufficient information available to understand the key aspects of the proposed building. It would be straightforward to set out the cost of alternative frame solutions, but this exercise needs to identify the impact on other elements and program. This exercise will be based on indicative base studies. It is common for the structural engineer to set out alternative frame and floor solutions for different types of construction based on a snapshot of the typical base of the building, which will pick up the key dimensions and spans and illustrate the typical construction requirements. There should be no need to measure the whole building for each option at this stage. The different base study options can include reinforced in-situ concrete, post-tension concrete, precast concrete, timber and structural steelwork and a number of sub-options for each type of material including different floor types. Often the number of options to consider can be between 5 and 10, although it is good practice to reject options if initial considerations prove that they are unworkable or will be uneconomical, for example, 
larger spans using reinforced in situ concrete that will result in prohibitively large members. Comparative cost studies are prepared on an elemental basis of the component parts of the frame and upper floors using approximate quantities and typical rates. This should also include an allowance for the method of providing lateral stability bracing of shear walls. As noted, it is important to also consider the cost impact on other building elements, for example the substructure, cladding and services installation. In parallel with the alternative frame solutions, the structural engineer can advise on the impact on foundations of the different frame and floor types. For example, a heavier concrete solution may require larger or deeper foundations, and the impact on cladding finishes and services should also be considered. With regard to cladding, different frame and floor solutions may result in different structural zones that can impact on the height of the building and the quantum of cladding and indeed internal walls, wall finishes, stairs and any other vertical components of the building. This can be mitigated by reducing the structural zone or combining the structural and services zones. An example of the latter would be the use of steelwork cell beams whereby services can pass through the holes of the webs of the sections. In relation to finishes, different solutions will also impact on the finishes required. For example, a concrete solution could achieve a fair face soffit, whilst a steelwork solution may favour a suspended ceiling. Furthermore, a steelwork solution would require columns to be cased, whereas concrete columns could be fair faced or plastered. Acoustic provisions would also be different, and an allowance could be made for this at this stage. In terms of services, the services zone routes and strategies could differ, and whilst the design of this element may not be developed, the QS could make an allowance where there is less flexibility. Where specialist systems are proposed, reference should be made to a specialist contractor for supplementary information. Then again, once typical quantities are established for any option, initial approaches can be made to still work contractors for market testing rates. Once the comparative costings for the alternative options is complete, it is common to convert the cost back to a cost per square meter so they can be more readily compared with the budget allowance and between alternative solutions. As the options analysis is concluded, the impact on programme should also be considered, which could affect preliminary costs, the impact on a requirement to hand over the building by a certain date, and whether the favoured option is consistent with the design intent for the building. Once an option is selected, more detailed cost planning will evolve through the more detailed design stages where the building form, orientation, height and massing will now be largely developed more detailed information will become available, for example, column and beam locations and sizes, floor construction details, core and shear wall configurations. For steel work solutions, the cost planning will become more detailed with costs built up from individual components, for example, columns, beams, special sections, connections, fire protection, and bracing, and key components will be costed using a rate per ton. Close liaison with the designers will be crucial throughout the more detailed cost planning process. In the early stages, allowances should be included for those items that may not be quantifiable, for example, the weight of fittings, type of fire protection, as well as specific items such as framework to an atrium roof or double height feature facade, as well as the items that can be measured. In terms of the costing methodology, we have set out on the pie chart the key components of a steel frame and their typical proportion of the overall frame cost, which we will review later in this presentation. For steel work, the primary and secondary members will be sized and can be quantified by measuring the length of each member and multiplying it by the weight per meter, which should be provided by the structural engineer. For certain sections, the weight per meter may not be apparent, so reference to standard steel tables will be necessary, for example, with angles, channels, and hollow sections. A rate per ton is applied to the overall weight, which will include the cost of raw material, detailing, fabrication, transport, and erection. The rate per ton for standard members will be reasonably consistent across a project, although angles, channels, hollow sections, cell beams, and built-up members, as well as fittings, will command a higher rate. Separate cost allowances are typically included for the preparation and coating works, for example, primers, corrosion protection, etc. Fittings, which would be typically based on a percentage of total frame weight. Fire protection, usually on a meter squared basis or a rate per ton by either calculating the surface area of the proposed members or by applying a multiplier to the total frame weight. Areas per meter for typical members can again be taken from standard steel tables and special connections to other materials should be considered. It is often assumed that a frame with the minimum tonnage will also have the lowest cost. 
However, as the pie chart demonstrates, the steelwork contractor's overall cost is driven as much by the time and process of fabrication of the components as it is by the quantity of the raw material. As well as considering the overall weight of the frame, it is also therefore important to understand the components of that frame, with frames that include a high proportion of non-standard sections, such as built-up members, fabricated plate girders required to support heavy loads, or trusses to span very long distances, likely to have a higher overall rate per tonne than for a more standard design, due to the higher fabrication and steelwork contracted design requirements, even if the overall frame weights are similar. Similarly, despite appearing lighter or more cost-effective on paper, sections that are manufactured less frequently than more popular sections may incur higher costs due to the limited availability, and early discussions with a steelwork contractor can identify any products or systems where availability can be an issue to enable this to be fed back to the design team or incorporated in cost estimates through adjusted allowances. A similar approach also needs to be taken when considering the allowance to make for connections and fittings, which are unlikely to be fully designed at this stage. In a typical multi-storey building, these can comprise 5 to 10% of the frame by weight, but can account for a higher or lower proportion of the total frame cost, as the cost of connections is largely related to their complexity rather than their weight. The most cost-effective approach will therefore have a high level of standardisation and repetition to take advantage of reduced material costs, quicker and cheaper fabrication, and ready availability. To achieve value overall, a balance is required between material cost and fabrication cost. Efforts to initially use the lightest columns and beams for the primary and secondary members may require additional stiffeners, adding cost and weight. It may be more economical to offset this additional cost by small increases in beam or column weight and reduce fabrication costs. The erection of the steel frame typically accounts for around 10 to 15% of the total frame cost, so as part of the establishment of the most appropriate rate per tonne to be adopted, it is also important to consider whether there are features of the proposed building or site that would have a significant impact on the erection time or cost. The extent of repetition, piece count, the type of connections to be used, site access and logistics can all have a significant impact on not only the cost of constructing the frame, but also the construction program and preliminaries allowances and can mitigate higher than average costs in some other areas. For example, a long span layout required to achieve internal column-free space may have a higher overall frame weight compared to a more typical solution, especially where columns are used as beams to create shallower floors, but it will be erected faster than a short span frame due to the reduced number of beams and columns. Working in a city centre or occupied area, on the other hand, can mean restrictions to working hours, noise, deliveries, access and craneage, all of which influence erection costs and can result in an extended on-site programme. As the frame construction is generally a critical path activity, any increase to the frame construction program will have an associated impact on project cost. A further key consideration when cost estimating during detailed design is the allowance to be included for fire protection, which typically accounts for between 10 and 15% of the total frame cost of a multi-storey building. Fire ratings for buildings are expressed in terms of the length of time the structure must remain structurally sound in a fire, and the requirements should always be checked with the design team. The cost of fire protection is affected by not only the required rating, but also the methods that are proposed to achieve it. And again, it is important to seek advice from the design team, as this may not be fully designed at this stage. The predominant method for fire protection of steel frames in the UK is intermittent thin film coatings, which swell when heated to provide insulation to the steel, and they are quick to apply and cost effective for 60 and 90 minutes resistance. It is also common for boarding to be used for areas of visible structure, such as for internal columns, as this provides a clean boxed appearance. However, these can be relatively expensive and slower to apply than other methods, so the proportion of boarding should be considered when setting the cost allowances. For some buildings, it may also be beneficial to carry out a specialist fire engineering study, which involves a risk-based approach to design considering where the actual risks in fire are, rather than the more simple guidance contained within the building regulations. This approach can lead to alternative fire ratings for some elements of the structure, and therefore potentially lower costs of fire protection. Alternatively, design studies can consider whether it is more economical to use slightly heavier structural members to reduce the overall volume of fire protection materials as the thicker plate of heavier sections inherently resists fire for longer. So, to summarise, when setting elemental budgets, both the proposed project and historic cost data should be interrogated to enable standard cost ranges to be adapted to suit project-specific factors.
key cost drivers, including building function, sector, location, site constraints, and market conditions should all be considered. During concept design, cost analyses of alternative structural options should also include the cost impact on other related building elements, in particular substructure, cladding, and mechanical electrical services distribution and integration, as well as program. Once the frame type has been selected and it becomes possible to quantify the proposed primary and secondary members, it is important to consider other elements not yet fully designed, including connections, fittings, and fire protection. Selecting the appropriate rate per tonne for each element also involves consideration of the impact of the proposed design and specific project on the principal elements of steel frame costs, being raw material, fabrication, erection, and fire protection. This webinar is the first of two that we'll be preparing on cost planning, the second of which we arrange later in the year and we'll concentrate on practical examples of cost planning and comparing frame solutions. The last slide also provides some useful links for further information together with a link to the Tata Steel stroke BCSA's new fire protection guide.